from Bros Rock and Vegeta shirts at the gym, to the card captor Sakura plushies that cover the entirety of my bed, to the Jotaro costume I saw a 10 year old wearing this weekend at a con, which feels mildly inappropriate. If you're an anime fan, there's a veritable buffet of wonders for you to spend your money on. But did you know that buying that body pillow may directly support the production of another season of your favorite show? Uh, yeah, that's how I'll justify it. With the global anime audience exploding, the relationship between anime and its merch can make or break a series. Story time! I'm six years old taking a stroll through my local toy store. I'm browsing the aisles of stuffed animals when I come across this large, adorable Hamtaro plush, practically begging me to take it home and cherish it forever like it's my own child. The thing is, I had never heard of Hamtaro before that, but it didn't matter because its huge anime eyes and cute chibi face already stole my heart. It reminded me of Pikachu. It also happened to be packaged with the VHS tape of the very first Hamtaro episode, which made it even more enticing to me. Little did I know that that plush slash VHS combo would be one of the smartest marketing tactics I'd ever come across in my short lifetime. In other words, that plush basically made me a fan of the Hamtaro anime. And you know what? That was the toy company's goal all along. After all, anime and merchandise have a symbiotic relationship, one that's at the very core of anime licensing and distribution, especially for international audiences like ours. It's no secret that anime and merchandise go hand in hand. If you really love an anime, then of course you'll want to buy merch with your favorite characters. Or sometimes you see cool merch that makes you want to watch that anime. I mean, if everyone else is on the playground whipping out their Beyblades, you don't want to be left out. So you beg your mom to get you a Beyblade, and the next thing you know, you've discovered the whole Beyblade cinematic universe. This is a little something that we like to call mind control. Excuse me. I mean, advertising. Similar to how anime was created in Japan to drive manga sales, a lot of anime merchandise is distributed here in the States to essentially sell an anime to you. Believe it or not, merch sales account for nearly 90% of the anime industry's income. And that's a double-edged sword. It means you can fill your Ita bag with a hundred different Bakugo keychains, but it also means that if a show's merch flops, the show could flop too. Because if 90% of a show's revenue comes from licensing, that means that only 10% comes from the show itself. No matter how you look at it, just straight up making an anime is a money losing game. Nine out of 10 shows operate at a loss. So it's up to that one show that doesn't operate at a loss to support the production of the other 10. On top of that, even if a show is super successful, it doesn't mean the production staff is bringing home the big bucks. Nah, they're going right into the pockets of the production committee, a group of companies that invest in a show along with the production company itself. Because of their upfront investment, these companies get rights rights to distribute the show internationally, rights to print books, and of course, rights to make toys and merch. And these companies want to see a return on their investment. They want to invest in that one in 10 show that's gonna sell merch like gangbusters. If they don't manage to invest in the next Pokemon, well, they might not be around to invest in the production of the next season of the show. And that brings me to the F word, my favorite word, fa franchises. Gotcha. Think about some of the largest anime properties here in the West. Pokemon, Naruto, Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball, Gundam. We can argue that these anime are so popular here because of their compelling stories, great characters, and fun art styles. But at the end of the day, they're here because they're so very marketable. Let's be honest here, the reason you got into Pokemon was probably because you found those little creatures to just be so gosh darn cute and so gosh darn available. From Happy Meal toys to playground trading hustles, Pokemon were everywhere. And yeah, it doesn't hurt that they're cute. I'm not ashamed to admit that's why I got into Pokemon as a child. I mean, look at Pikachu. Isn't Pikachu adorable? Don't you wish you had one? Don't you? Don't you? Bow to your Pikachu overlords. Well, that's too bad because Pikachu is unfortunately not real. He gets. But you can purchase an assortment of nice Pikachu plushies from Nintendo World. They come in big, small, chunky, chibi. Some of them are in costume. 
I don't know about you, but I would gladly spend every penny I own on a Pikachu doll wearing a Team Magma costume. Yes, it exists, and it owns my soul. That cute little eco rat. This is one reason that Pokemon has remained a cultural phenomenon and cash cow for over two decades, and will most likely continue to in the future. To a lesser extent, Yu-Gi-Oh! is also a concept that practically sells itself. Card games have been popular since, like, the dawn of time, but cards with blue-eyed white dragons on them that you can kick your friends' asses with on the school playground? Um, yes please, I'll take 20. Then I'll watch the anime so I can actually learn the ever-changing rules of the game. So we all have our opinions on anime merchandise. Admittedly, sexy Reagan Arataka body pillows and meticulously detailed nendoroids aren't something you'd find at your local Bed Bath & Beyond, but for us hardcore anime fans, they're about as much of a necessity as an instant pot or a set of nice dish towels. Oh, sorry, did I say Reagan body pillows? Must have been a slip of the tongue. Thanks to nerds like us, anime fandom is a lifelong commitment, one that spans a vast demographic. Now's a great time to be an anime fan, and that's partly because just as anime's demo is vast and diverse, anime merch has grown in variety too. Let's face the facts. Anime is no longer some underground niche interest like it was 20 years ago. It's a hot commodity now, and everyone wants a piece of that pie. Like Netflix, and Amazon, and Hulu. And where merch is concerned, Michael B. Jordan? His recently released Naruto-inspired clothing line with Coach is the epitome of where we are with anime merch now. Luxury brands are profiting on fandoms. The collab had its own booth at NYCC this year, which Kurt Yidoye and I proceeded to make fun of ceaselessly. Do I plan on dropping $325 for a pair of Coach Ninjutsu sneakers? Absolutely not. Do I still think they're cool? Um, eh. I guess I'd call it smart, if anything, because while as a child my relationship with anime was more about getting as many toys as possible, now I'm more into finding anime fashion and accessories like enamel pins and hoodies. Not ones that are $325 though. Seriously, what the f Michael B. Jordan? If you were at Anime NYC this year, you might have noticed just how much anime streetwear was available. I mean, have you seen our boys Yidoye and Kurt? And well, I guess, me today? It's no longer just about the plushies or the model kits or the body pillows. It's about a whole lifestyle. And now smaller creators as well as huge corporations are producing merch to appeal to anime's huge fan base. Brands like Wuji, Sugoi Shirts, Valeza, and Kiyutis are churning out anime-inspired streetwear featuring characters of their own design. Since the anime industry is growing rapidly internationally, the demand for anime merchandise has grown along with it. According to an article in License Global, anime's rapid rise in popularity here in the West has made companies like Viz Media and Toy Animation go into full gear in order to meet their customers' needs for products relating to their favorite franchises. In fact, Toy Animation ranks as the 28th largest licensor in the world, with well over $2 billion in retail sales in 2016 alone. This makes a ton of sense, seeing how Toei is known for licensing anime giants like Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, and One Piece. While back in the 90s and early 2000s, you'd be lucky if you could find a couple of Goku and Vegeta action figures in the Hot Topic, today you'll be able to find products like clothing, candy, video games, and cosplays at tons of online and physical retailers, many of which aren't even exclusively anime retailers. And that's wild! For example, Uniqlo has recently released an entire line of Sailor Moon graphic tees to celebrate the anime's 25th anniversary, and the release of the series' first electronic manga, using original art courtesy of Nako Takeuchi herself. Sailor Moon is already insanely popular, and collabing with a well-known retailer like Uniqlo is sure to get people excited about the series again. Old fans may see the shirts and want to go back to the series for nostalgic reasons, and new fans will discover just how wonderful this anime truly is. Speaking of anniversaries, Uniqlo also has a collab with another insanely popular franchise, Gundam! Celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, Mobile Suit Gundam continues to spark excitement with its wide audience spanning across multiple generations. Gundam is actually an interesting case, because as one of the top 15 highest grossing media franchises of all time, most of the money that it has made has been directly linked to merch sales and tie-ins. 
Personally, I like to think of Gundam as kind of like Japan's Star Wars in a way. Its cultural impact is almost too insane to comprehend. This franchise has gone on to create merchandise like toys, watches, apparel, stationery, poster prints, books, magazines. It has its own museum in Japan. And the model kits. Oh baby, the model kits. The amount of Gundam models and build your own model kits alone that have gone on to sell since the 80s, it is honestly like breaking my brain looking at some of these numbers. And I've always been really bad at math. Easily well into the hundreds of billions. Many would argue that the success of the series is measured by the number of Gunpla models that sell with each new installment of the franchise. <sighs> Giant robots, man. They're universal desire. So much so that we just did a whole video on mecha anime. And we still only managed to cover just a fraction of the whole story. Speaking of Gundam merchandise, do you, do you want some? Because I have some to give you for free. Like right now. Our friends at RightStuffAnime.com gave us this amazing Gundam box set to give to you. Head over to our Twitter and respond to our giveaway tweet with your favorite Gundam series. Use the hashtag RobotsKickAss to enter. And if you want to pay it forward, check out our sponsors for this video, RightStuffAnime.com. They've been around for over 30 years, which means they were in the game before I even existed, before Pikachu even existed. And they've got tons of exclusive merch and an amazing holiday sale. Just saying. Let your undying love of anime merch run wild and free. And everything I've talked about so far, yeah, that's just in the West. Anime merchandise in Japan takes it to a whole other level. We may have some shops that sell some anime figurines next to their Captain America display, but Japan? <laughs> They have streets dedicated to helping otaku everywhere declare their love for their husbandos and their waifus. You know, despite the recent Netflix release, convention presence, and countless memes made of it here, including one that inspired the name of this here channel, Neon Genesis Evangelion surprisingly never had a huge demand for merchandise in the States. In Japan, however, Ava merch is like, kind of a huge deal. There's even an entire retailer dedicated exclusively to Ava merch called the Ava Store in Ikebukuro. Is Ava merch less popular here because America is less inclined to sell two feet figures of 14 year old girls wearing swimsuits? Who could say? What I can say though is that I wish we could buy stuff like official Nerve jewelry, backpacks, and phone cases rather than just a few measly t-shirt options. The Ava store does ship international though, so there's some hope for us who want figures of Asuka in some cute ass Japanese street fashion after all. Here's another one. Is there anyone familiar with a feline mascot named Doraemon? That kind of sounds like Doraemon. Somebody photoshopped me onto that little kitty. Maybe? Maybe not? If you don't, that's understandable because he's nowhere near as marketed here as a certain Sanrio kitty cat. But god, that Doraemon is just as iconic if you ask me. In Japan, this earless blue alien cat can be found just about everywhere you go. And you can bet your bottom dollar that the merchandise options are endless there. And naturally a bit strange too. In fact, when I was researching Doraemon merch for this video, I found not only toys, stationary items, and an entire cafe with his face on it, but also an electronic thermometer on Tokyo Otaku mode that looks an awful lot like a pregnancy test. Also, I should point out that they're still making Doraemon movies every single year, and have been since 1980, so it's safe to say that the Doraemon pregnancy test is keeping this franchise alive and thriving, I guess. So yeah, as long as we have anime, we will have weird ass anime merchandise to go along with it. Hopefully as anime continues to be part of the mainstream here, we will start to see even more awesome pieces that we can add to our growing collections. Hopefully we'll see some smaller series get the love that they so deserve here too through merchandise, because there is nothing that I want more than more Mob Psycho 100 merchandise than just keychains. Please, for the love of all things spirits and such, give me an official licensed hoodie with Reagan's stinky rat face on it. Sorry, lost my cool there. Before I end this video though, I have one more story that I would like to share with you all. I was born and raised here in New York, and back in my day, before it became the famous Nintendo World that sits in Rockefeller Center, it was the official Pokemon Center. 
I spent a good 75% of my childhood in this store, and every time I went, I had to walk out with at least one new figurine, lest the spirit of Pazuzu himself be invoked. This place wasn't just a store to me, it was a literal portal into the Pokemon world. While shopping for my 100th Pikachu plush, the Pokemon movies would be playing on screens all around me. Just complete Pokemon overstimulation. As a child, this was heaven. Actually, if it was still around today, it would still be heaven because I sold my soul to Game Freak when I was five years old. So, why am I telling you all these stories about my childhood? Well, I happened to do some digging into my archives and you would not believe some of the vintage goodies that I have found. Actually, rather than tell you about it, let me show you. All right, so back here to start off, these are not old, but I figured I'd show them first. Mob, you guys remember Mob from the, 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 the Pokemon My Hero Academia crossover. By the way, still waiting for part three. Next we have this little Hello Kitty doll. My brother got me this when he was in Japan. That's right, I work for the anime channel. My brother gets to go to Japan. How fun. This is really cute though. Thank you if you're watching. All right, now we're moving on to the vintage stuff. Let's see what's in my bag of goodies. Ooh, okay, first we've got Eevee. Very cute, a little scratched up. Missing its tail. That's fun. Ooh, we also have Skitty. Also missing parts of its tail. Face is looking a little greasy, but I give her a 10. Ooh, we got Pikachu. Also missing its tail. I had a bit of an oral fixation as a kid. Ooh, we've got Mew. <laughs> missing its legs. I swear, I was not a violent kid. Just, I like play with things. We have Hamtaro, not missing any parts, but you could put this on a pencil. I always did that when I was a kid. Um, I'm not sure if you can erase things with it. I never wanted to give it a try because I just didn't want to mess up its cute little ears. So that's what's in here. That's fun. We also have this Hamtaro activity book. Let's see, we've got, oh, this also has stuff missing. Once again, not a violent kid. I just like to play with things. Look, look how cute. I've read this like every single day. I probably memorized some of the pages. <gasps> I remember this. Oh, this always made me hungry. These do not look like crackers. So yeah, it's got a lot of fun activities in here, mazes. I never, I never wrote in it. I never saw this episode. No, wait, I did see this episode. I am a liar. I hate how they always villainize the cats in this show. But the hamsters were just so gosh darn cute. All right, enough of that. And my last thing, oh, look at this, vintage. You just can't get these anymore. Well, you probably could off of eBay, but like it would cost $10,000. Let's see if it still works. I love that sound, music to my ears. The nostalgia is coming back. What game do I have in here actually? Oh no, wait, it might be broken. Well, it might not be working, but I got Ham Ham's Unite in there. Did anybody else like, blow on cartridges as a kid. <laughs> I actually do that with Switch games now too. It's just kind of a force of habit. But yeah, isn't that cute? We got Pichu there and Pikachu. I miss being a child. Okay, that's enough from little old me. As you can see, I'm doing my best to single-handedly ensure that the Pokemon franchise lives on forever. I'm Dory. Thank you so much for watching Get in the Robot. Made in New York because we cannot move to Japan.